Recently, I was reminded of the fact that years and years ago, I had a Wattpad account. What if this whole video goes and I end up actually liking it? What if I actually like the story? Hello. Welcome to part two, quite a while later. You guys asked for it and um, we're doing it, I guess. So we're gonna start right where we left off with chapter six of the same story. The chapter six is titled AIA001. Before I start, um, I actually filmed more than I ended up posting and I cut it out to save for time, like to make the video shorter. Um, so I read chapter five of the story, which has been the worst chapter so far, in my opinion. Uh, so I'll watch that now. Basically what happens next is some more very cringy dialogue, and then um, Max and Obsidian take Casey aside, take her into a bedroom, um, and then basically explain to her, hey, you're a cyborg. Um, and then turns out, plot twist, Max is also a cyborg, and he's saying, hey, I was confused just like you, and then Obsidian says some more edgy things. Then Obsidian leaves, Casey looks at Max, Max looks at Casey, Max says, hey, you look familiar, but then offers some food or water, and then they go to the kitchen to make sandwiches. And then Max describes, like, there's this weird inner monologue thing where he describes her as intimidating and the kind of person kids wouldn't like, which, uh, whatever. And then Casey, like, stands up and walks for the first time. Then they eat sandwiches and everything's okay. Um, and they talk a little bit, and I'm not even gonna call them wholesome at this point. I just don't like either of them, really. He left Casey staring at it, which I think is the kung fu show he's talking about that's on the TV, and went back to making sandwiches alone. Almost 20 minutes passed and two sandwiches had been eaten, but they were still the ones Max had made for everyone else. He started wondering what was taking everyone else so long, because all the other kids went out somewhere with Obsidian, I think. And then, as if on cue, the front door burst open and in came a frantic Yasmin. Come quick! It's Obsidian and all the others! They're in trouble! And that's where chapter 4 ends. It's a cliffhanger, ooh. I was gonna end there. But then I previewed chapter 5, which is titled Obsidian's Stalkers. Chapter 5 is um, from Obsidian's perspective. So we all know it's, um, it's gonna be real great. It's gonna be real nice. Yes, this is Obsidian, and I'm taking the reins for just a little bit. So try to put up with me. You can get back to your dopey third-person love story once I'm done. Don't get bored yet. I'm getting to things. So now we're breaking the fourth wall. While that moron girl and my moron friend Max were just getting to know each other, I was staring out the window, and it wasn't just because I was disinterested, which I was. It was because I could see a big man in dark clothes practically staring right at me. Big creepy man in a black suit following you around. Pretty classic 1900s stuff, right? Wrong. Because this is not a 1900s story, is it? About a month after Max first showed up, I had been noticing some people watching me. At first, I thought it was just one of my lady friends or something. Obsidian, you need to chill. But then this one time, I actually saw my stalker. <laughs> a love-struck girl I can handle, but a guy? <laughs> I think I'm trying to establish Obsidian as this absolute, absolute jerk. Like, I'm really trying to hit it home. Um, but past me just had no self-awareness. I had no doubt in my mind that these men knew where I lived and hung out every day. And I say there's more than one man because I see one talking into an e-pager. Okay. There are people communicating to each other, always knowing my whereabouts and sharing information. Whether they were after me or not, I didn't know, but I was freaked out. So freaked out, I guess, that I got the feeling I shouldn't mention it to anyone, not even my stupid sister. So anyway, the explaining is over. You want to know what all this garbage has to do with our two heroes or whatever? There were three big men all wearing dark clothing. One had Minx in an arm lock, the other had Ali hung over his shoulder like a potato sack, and the third was trying desperately to catch that monster, Yasmin. Of course I did what anyone would do. I ran straight to them and demanded they tell me what the hell they were doing. 
To my surprise, they actually look glad to see me. Ah, Mr. Obsidian, these are your friends, aren't they? Asked the one holding Ali. Cooperate with us and they won't get hurt. I just said, no way, and charged the one holding the screaming little girl. He chucked me aside with his free arm. I got back up and tried punching his stomach, but it didn't even seem to feel it. And I know, I'm a pretty good fighter. This is a 14 year old boy against like three adults, was it? Why does he think he's so tough? I'm not stupid. I knew from the start that I didn't stand a chance against them. Well, okay. But I had to do something, at least get the point across that I didn't like them and would rather die than do what they ask. They didn't even ask anything. Then Yasmin got away and um, Obsidian got caught and struggled. And then he asks, what do you want then? Hurry up and tell me. Good, the big man behind me said, listen, we don't care about these girls. We just want you, we just want to talk to that Max friend of yours. You guys have been stalking me. Was that the reason all along? Why don't you just stalk him then? Because you found him. You did, didn't you? I didn't answer. Wondering how these men knew so much about knew so much would be dumb. It was obvious they were professional creeps. Well, so are you. So is Max. Why would you want to talk to him? Is he in trouble with the cops or something? No answer. Just cooperate, young man. Suddenly his voice seemed less amused and more threatening. You should have put it together by now. We're not after your friends here, but we have no problem hurting them to get what we really want. I locked eyes with my sister and signaled with my head for her to leave. She took Ali by the hand and went in the same direction Yasmin had. I turned to face the guy behind me. I'm not cooperating. Welcome back. Hopefully now you uh, maybe remember more of the plot and what kind of story you're signing up for. Um, if you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend that, although at the same time I kind of don't recommend that. But just know that Bionic is like a wannabe, edgy, apoc apocalyptic, sci-fi story. You, you sure you wa wanna come? Am I slowing you down? Well, no, but Max had shoved right past Yasmin as soon as she told them what was happening. She didn't follow them, Max noticed but he didn't blame her. I say them because Casey was right at his heels. She seemed to have no trouble keeping up to his running either. Actually, it was the other way around. Hey, you know there'll be a fight, right? Max panted. No answer. Obsidian is in trouble. Yasmin said trouble as in they were almost to the store and running towards them was Minx leading Ali by the hand. Max was glad when they stopped to talk. What's going? See, still panting. Going on. Minx was panting as well, and Allie was still wiping tears from her eyes. Minx caught her breath before explaining. Obsidian's there alone with these three big guys. They threatened us. I'm going to take Allie to your place. I'll come back. Go save that idiot. She ran past them, then warned Max that they were strong over her shoulder. Max and Casey ran the rest of the way and saw that what Minx had said was completely true. There were three large men in dark clothing fighting Obsidian. Of course, Obsidian was at a disadvantage. He wasn't looking too good. His back was against one of the posts holding an electric sign up. He was struggling to stay on his feet and his face was bruised. Obsidian, Max called. Obsidian turned to see Max and Ka Casey <laughs> running towards him. The three men turned too. Smiles spread across their faces. Obsidian's face, though, was almost frightening to look at. Casey, for the first time, so first time since they'd raced out the front door, slowed down and hung behind Max, not knowing what to do. He didn't even notice. He charged one of the three creeps. The other two hung back and watched. So that's the other one. He looked past Max at the girl standing a ways back, confused. He didn't say any more though before Max punched him full force. That did something. The man was thrown back, landing on his butt four feet away. One of the two spectators chuckled. He's learned how to fight, the other one nodded. But here was the annoying thing. You know when you're outnumbered in a fight, let's say against three mean bullies at school, and you hit your hardest but they just laugh? <laughs> Is this me self-projecting? Because I promise, no one hit me in school. Like, um, <laughs> Max was feeling the same way as a kid being laughed at would. Unspeakably frustrated. The man took a step forward and small cracks showed up on the ground. A person living a century earlier would assume that this man was some kind of sumo wrestler or boxer, but in Future City, there was no such thing. You're not human, are you? Max blurted out. The man smiled. Since you won't remember anyways, why don't I tell you? I am the first and only full-body artificial intelligence android to be created, and I know all about you, Max. We're taking you home. 
okay so last chapter if i remember correctly uh they were asking obsidian about max so the whole reason they're here is for max and honestly just take him away like no one's gonna miss him just take him i don't know where they're taking him but uh they can feel free max was in shock so what yasmin had said was true that was crazy he really seems to not have any faith whatsoever in yasmin's word because this is the second time he's been amazed at the fact of uh, like whatever she's saying is true and not a lie the aia could see max's disbelief but this isn't some cliche superhero story yes it is so it's not like he would explain everything right on the spot i mean come on that's just so unrealistic this is me this is the narrative why do i write like this the big man charged max was unprepared so all he could do was throw up his arms in a defensive stance but that did nothing at all he was thrown back almost 10 feet, flying past Casey, who was still just standing there. All Max could do for a moment was lie there, and when his eyes opened, he saw Casey standing there in front of him. Casey and the AIA stared at each other. The two big men, who were human, seemed so entertained by all this, it was frustrating. Get out of my way, we don't want you yet, the android said. Do you have a name? Casey asked him. AIA-001, if you consider it a name. I will remember that. Are you going to fight me? If you get destroyed, am I get in trouble? I will not get destroyed. AIA-001 smirked. He swung his arm, almost swatting Casey away, sending her past Max. So I could have said swatting, not almost swatting. Casey! Max tried to get up, but he couldn't. Everything about him except his arms were perfectly human. So what human wouldn't be injured after being punched in the stomach by a robot? But Casey stood up. She hadn't been punched. That is another cliffhanger, and we'll move on to the next chapter, which is chapter 7, called The First Fight. Obsidian was still slumped against a post, now unconscious, and Max was now lying on the ground with broken ribs. Casey stood there, right on the spot where she had been thrown to. It makes sense. It was like she was challenging all three big men, but the other two just chuckled. The AIA was even more amused. The big men ran at Casey, preparing to punch her in the stomach like he had Max. Somehow she saw it coming and the punch was off by mere inches. But the android just smirked and grabbed Casey by the collar. Well, the man raised her even higher above his head. It was getting harder for Casey to breathe. Leave him already. Leave him or die. And then it says here, parentheses, gasp, parentheses. I won't die. Casey put everything she had into a kick aimed directly at the man's neck. He dropped her and bent over in pain. He, isn't he a robot? Why would he feel pain? There is a, a little fact about artificial intelligence androids that you might want to know. Their bodies are 100% robotic. <laughs> Even if their minds work about the same as humans, they can't feel pain or complex emotions like jealousy and despair. But they are programmed so that if one of their parts are damaged, damaged they react as if they are really feeling pain. The greater the damage or the more important the part damage, the greater, the greater the reaction. Of course, Casey didn't know any of that, but now that you do, it should make things more clear. That's really lazy world building in my opinion. Just, the narrative is supposed to be used to narrate whatever is happening, not to take breaks from the action to describe the world. So, I mean, it's not as if I can actually critique this because it's crappy anyways, but I just wanted to say, that's not how you're supposed to do world building, and I wouldn't do that now. You brat, he growled. You don't want to fight me. No, you don't want to fight me. Ooh. You were dead the minute you challenged me, but I'm still alive. AIA001 was hunched over and looked up angrier than ever. But this time, Casey didn't wait for him to attack. She made the first move, running at him and jumping on his back. She dug her heel into the back of his neck and was still on top of him when he fell. The big man quickly got up, throwing Casey off. His neck was now twisted in a creepy, inhuman way, forcing his head to stay ducked down. But he still turned around the fight. The android gave punch after punch, one coming only seconds after the other, but he had trouble looking up to see Casey, so only two fast push punches managed to hit the target. In one strong, swooping kick, Casey's foot went up, hitting right under the android's duck chin. There was a small burst of electricity, then the head went flying and the dented body fell. It was like some futuristic David and Goliath. Shaking and looking up at Casey with wide eyes, the two men took out their teleportation devices and vanished. 
Casey ran over to Max as soon as they were gone. Are you okay? Max had seen everything that had just happened, yeah, but couldn't react because he was in a dazed state. So after Max asks Casey if Obsidian is still alive, she says, how can I tell? And Max calls her stupid. Uh, so she, she then uh, checks Obsidian to see if he's breathing, and apparently he's breathing, so then Max is like, oh, thank goodness. And then he passes out. Obsidian coughed. <coughs> hey, you're awake, so you didn't die. Suddenly, Casey's legs start working, as in, the human way. Okay, she realized she was exhausted, and lied down just like Max had, not wanting to get up. Obsidian sighed and leaned against the post again. Let's just lie out here for now. And we'll worry about life, some other time. Obsidian sighed. Casey smiled and closed her eyes. Agreed. And that's the end of chapter 7. Is this, like, some character development? Am I trying to make the characters likable after seven chapters, now they're becoming likable. I don't know. I don't know how I feel, so we're just gonna move on to the next chapter and... Uh, okay, it's called The Boss. Sir, we're very sorry. We failed you, and AIA-00 was defeated. Did you leave him? Their boss asked. Excuse me? Agent-006 and 042. Did you leave my android behind? Um... Yes, sir. We, uh, we thought you wouldn't want him since he was completely destroyed. So he was destroyed. Was it our target? No, sir. It was the other one. The girl. The girl! Please tell me you're joking. That's ridiculous. Okay, so everyone's a sexist. That's nice. I'm very serious. It's true. I saw it. She kicked his head right off. Thank you. You may leave now. Yes, sir. It's a little bit confusing about who's talking, but I guess there are three people in a room or whatever. The two large men dressed in dark clothing left the room. Their boss was a tall man in his 50s with a dressy dark brown suit and light brown tie and a wrinkled face half covered in a mustache. I've learned a lot, he said. That one is going to cause me problems someday. The man took out an e-pager. He pressed a button and spoke into it. It's me, Matthews. Get me online. I have orders for O. Oh, A-I-S, number 007, K. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. This one was another short one. It's just supposed to build more dread and anticipation. And it's almost as if I don't actually have anything planned. I'm just trying to build up tension. Chapter 9, Ali's Promise. It was two days after that fight against AIA-001, the first AI android to exist for over a century. Max had been strangely out of it since he first became unconscious, so he had been in bed all this time. Obsidian had woken up sooner, but had been at his own house with Minx to completely recover. Yasmin came to visit every day, of course with Ali at her heels every time. Someone had to be at the house while Max was resting, and not to watch the house, to protect the house, from a certain stupid someone who didn't know the difference between blood and blueberry jam. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to take from that sentence. Grocery stores provide the closest things on earth to real food, so they are considered a luxury. They provide separate ingredients, giving you- I'm already bored. This wall of text keeps on going. I just want to know what happens in this chapter, please. Okay, so then there's this whole scene where basically there's, you know, shenanigans going on in the kitchen. Yasmin versus Casey, you get the point. We're skipping more and more paragraphs. Casey turned the TV off and stood up. I don't understand any of these jokes. <laughs> and what's an unplanned child? Is that like me showing up on the st- <laughs> So we're just gonna ignore what Casey just said about whatever's happening on the TV. I would like to ask what kind of show she's watching and also what- how I thought this whole chapter, this whole chapter would be interesting or witty or cute in any way. You may be wondering now what the point of all this may be. Yes, yes I am. You got a little action and now the lives of Max and Casey the cyborgs are boring again. <laughs> you would expect something to happen sooner. None of this seems to matter at all, right? Well, the truth is, what happened that evening was the start of something terrible. Something horrible. It was starting point for death. I need to learn that being aware 
that a chapter is boring or that my writing is terrible and like making a joke about that in the narrative doesn't make it any less terrible. It doesn't make the readers go, ha ha ha, she knows, ooh, I should read another chapter. I'm actually fine with just leaving this behind me and never reading it again. Or please, like, tell me to read a different story, which will probably be bad too, but maybe not as bad. Thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>